Andy Foster's going to kick us off uh, while I just um, provide these gentlemen with their gifts. Andy is uh, leading off our next session, Driving for Change, Enabling Transition at a Local Level. Welcome, Andy. Okay, um, so uh, I'm, the I'm the chair of the Transport and Urban Development Committee for Wellington City Council, and, and I was asked to give you a slightly different perspective on this, and not just to talk about EVs, but to, EVs are part of the answer, uh, and I want to talk about some of the other bits of the answer, as well as EVs and what Council's doing in that, in that space. So the first thing there is um, our strategic framework, which is our urban growth plan. So this is all about how we do our urban development, how we do our transport, and I've just got some nice words about the kind of things that we value there in terms of our quality of life, um, our public transport use, uh, and, uh, and our high number of people walking and cycling. Um, and we will use, which one do we use to go forward? That one there, hopefully. Right. No, that won't do. Okay, um, some of the key things in our urban development strategy. Um, so uh, contrary to some people's view, the population is growing, its city is not dying. Um, we are aiming to, as we grow, we're aiming to maintain the city's um, high quality of life. Every time we do, a or a survey is done uh, of the, all the cities across uh, New Zealand, we have the highest quality of life. Uh, and the city's character. Uh, we want urban development in the right places, and a key thing there, if you want to get emissions down, one of the key things is to put people living in places where they can walk to places. They don't have to get in a car and drive a long way. And I think we had one of the comments made earlier was the, cars are, the, the, the car is a bad thing, the EV is a less bad thing, but if you can avoid using any of those things in the first place, actually it's quite good, and it saves a heck of a lot of money and pressure on infrastructure. So we want to keep the, co the city compact, walkable and supported by an efficient transport network. We want to protect that uh, city's natural um, setting. And yes, you can see the hills most of the time. It's only on those occasions, rare occasions when it rains very, very hard. Uh, we want to make, also we want to make the, the city more resilient. And obviously we know where, where we live. We know we live on top of a, a fairly mobile bit of the earth and we want to be able to uh, survive it if it moves in the night or during the day. So some of the key things that we're doing in terms of transport and urban form opportunities, the first one is good urban form. And in fact, that's probably the most important of any of these. It's more important actually than the transport things because we're starting talking not about mobility but about accessibility. And if access means all you've got to do is walk next door, then your journey is really, really short and the pressure you put on anything is really, really small. So urban form, really, really critical. Um, Restoring the natural environment, we've been doing a lot of that over the last 25 years, um, and I think most of you are well aware of that. Carbon sinks, obviously that helps as well. If you restore the natural environment, you've got, to, got plants growing, they are drawing carbon out of the atmosphere. That's a good thing too. At the moment, we're going through a process which we are calling Let's Get Welly Moving, so that's Greater Wellington, ourselves, Wellington City Council and NZTA, and we're starting to draw up the framework for, we had a, a, a roading proposal, uh, that went down in a screaming heap. Uh, and so we're starting to draw up a framework to then go out to the community and say, hey, what are your ideas, guys? And I reckon that if I went around this, uh, this room, and I don't know what, we've got here 200 odd people, that we get 300 different ideas as to how we should solve this problem. And that is going to be what the, the challenge is going to be there. So we're, about, we're engaging in that process at the moment, and hopefully by the end of next year we should have some answers. Investing in rail and bus priority is a really important thing. There is no point in getting, and you know, we had the, 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 uh, the Norwegian situation there, one of the things that worry us a little bit, if you put EVs onto, um, onto your bus network and your buses can't get through, our buses are already congested enough anyway, and one of the things that the Regional Council is wanting us to do is to get the buses through uh, that, that network, and if you've got a lot of EVs clogging that up, you've got some downsides as well as some upsides. So um, we've got to get bus priority and we've got to get serious about that. Cycleway development, obviously we're working through that process at the moment, that's about making cycling a, 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 a part of the the system. It's not the, uh, the be-all and end-all, it's part of an overall solution. It's one of, one of the solutions there. Pedestrian environment, we have a huge number of people who walk both around town and to town, that's very important too. Parking policy gives us some interesting um, opportunities as well. One of the things people say to me, oh look, what you should do is you should get rid of the minimum parking requirements. Well, we haven't had a minimum re parking requirement in the central city or our suburban areas for 22 years. And they go, oh, didn't know that. But we do need to have a look at whether we actually still require um, parking one, par one parking space per residential uh, unit because that actually opens some opportunities as well. And put, certainly uh, in terms of affordable housing, if you don't have to provide space, if you don't have to provide garaging, etc., actually you can get more dwellings into a certain area, you can actually make the housing cheaper and, uh, and affordable housing is a, is a really important issue. Pricing mechanisms, and it's been really good to hear the Minister's announcement last, last week about the, you know, they are starting to engage seriously in this idea of things like maybe Levies on long stay parking, not short stay, but long stay parking, congestion pricing, those are the sort of market mechanisms we need um, the government to give us as local authorities the opportunity to use. It doesn't mean we have to use them, but to have the opportunity at the moment we don't have that. 
car ownership versus income, I put that there because in fact Wellington City has the highest income per capita in the country. We also have the lowest equal car ownership. So think about that, those two don't necessarily go together. And then directly related to the conversation today, car share including EVs, so we're embarking in a process, uh, we've got four different operators at the moment who are uh, trialling uh, car share schemes, three of them have just started, one's been around for a little while, uh, and we want to upscale that, we want to see them upscale that. One of those is a, is a hybrid operator, Mevo, um, so it'll be interesting to see how all of these go, and I think that the future for them looks pretty exciting, and that fits very, very strongly with some of the message we've had today, and electric vehicles as well. Um, just in terms of, uh, of where we're going, put all that package together where we're at at the moment. These are two census periods, 2001 and 2013. You can see this, these are the number of people who went to work or education on census day uh, per the number of people who went there by some means other than the car compared to the number of people who went there by car. So you can see Wellington City was way ahead of the rest of the country and we're now even further ahead of the rest of the country. That's a good message. Our low ca carbon capital uh, plan, so we've, we've got ourselves, we're the third city in New Zealand to get onto the CMARS information base, um, so that gives us a good database to, to work from. We've consulted on our low carbon capital plan and that will be approved uh, in two days time, which will be good. Uh, we have an emissions profile there in the graph and you can see there the red line is the mobile emissions, that's transport, and the, um, the blue line is the stationary emissions, that's, that's basically buildings, etc. 90% of our emissions for Wellington City are um, uh, transport and stationary energy. Uh, so that, and that, uh, that lot there also includes landfill and the region's airport. And the fact that Wellington City represents most of the region's economic activity. We're doing some stuff in terms of bikes and buses. I'll just say they're the one to pick up on, uh, having had that last session we just had. The City Council is really, really keen to see electric buses. We do not want to be locked into diesels for the next 10, 15 years. We don't want to see that happen. Some of the key, key transport initiatives, initiatives in that low carbon plan, um, supporting car sharing in all its forms, including ride sharing and carpooling. So we've allocated, in, our, in that plan, we're allocating 100 car parks. When, it, when you think each one of those car parks is worth something between six and even up to $10,000 a year to the city, that's actually a pretty major commitment to say, we're gonna take those out of earning that kind of revenue um, over a period of time and give them to car share and electric vehicle charging stations. We may not need them all, but we're starting down that track. Participating in regional par partnerships to support EV charging um, deployment, come to one of those in just a moment, and including EVs in our vehicle fleet. There's a bunch of other transport initiatives that we um, are also taking in that plan, but I'll jump over those because they're not directly related to the electric vehicle uh, side of things. Council's role to date in EVs, uh, very early in the journey. Um, I just made the point there that only 30% of journeys are at peak time. That means 70% of them are not, and that means public transport can sometimes challenge be challenged to deal with those. So EVs are an important part of the answer. Uh, our first MEV, uh, the, the Mitsubishi electric vehicle, we got in 2010. We got one and, and four other companies uh, got another four of the five that which, were, which were bought in. We've got a little bit of charging infrastructure to date. You've already seen some pictures of that uh, in one of the earlier presentations. In terms of our vehicle fleet, we have the opportunity, we think, to dramatically reduce the, our vehicle fleet, which is good news for ratepayers. If we can get rid of about a third of the cars which sit in the basement or get out uh, with our staff, that's a really good thing and can get more use out of a fewer, fewer number of vehicles. If we need more of them occasionally, maybe being a member of a car share scheme is part of the answer for that as well, and that's maybe a cheaper way of doing things and a more flexible way of doing things. So the kind of language we're talking about is to get at least a third of our vehicle fleet to be EVs. Now, councils have a vehicle fleet, a lot of which is not like conventional light vehicles. It's all kinds of things which um, we don't really have a lot of those kind of vehicles around. You know, it's heavy vehicles at landfills and things of that nature. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, when I wrote this anyway, and I missed much of what the Minister said this morning, currently there's no electric option in the government pack package. We would certainly like to see EVs in there because obviously that potentially makes them cheaper to buy and if we can give assurance to um, manufacturers that they, you know, they knew, know that there's an, an order from New Zealand Inc, that's a good thing to be able to do. Charging infrastructure, well we're working with the private sector on charging infrastructure, so we're directly working with at least one energy company at the moment, and I think you'll see fairly shortly some fast charge um, uh, stations um, in the CBD uh, through that energy company. Um, Spark, uh, we're talking about putting, essentially put, uh, having the ability to, to hook up to um, what are currently um, phone booths, and be able to charge your car out of those. Uh, and so some work's being done. Sigurd's doing a, a lot of that work um, with us. Uh, and we're also talking to ChargeNet about putting uh, infrastructure on the side of our roads as well. 
We've already recognised that we will lose some of that revenue. I talked about those um, 100 car parking spaces. We've already recognised an upfront cost in our annual plan. We've taken $50,000 out of our parking budget effectively and saying we don't expect to get that anymore uh, because it's going into these kind of um, car share and electric vehicle charging um, spaces. We're putting sensor metres in and that actually gives us the chance to do some clever things around how we charge uh, for spaces so that we can, for example, say if, you, if you're staying, if all you need to do is you need to charge at that particular space, you're there for half an hour, that gives you enough time to charge, but don't leave the car there all day, we want somebody else in there as well. So then maybe you start charging, so you move that car on, so you get more value out of that space in terms of more cars being able to charge there. Uh, and also putting a charging station or charging infrastructure at some of uh, council and council related um, locations. In Zealandia, I'm looking at Russ over there, Zealandia is about to put three in, in fact they're starting the work on that today, uh, charging stations and they will take about three or four hours I think to charge up and of course you need to spend that much time wandering around the wonderful facility that Zealandia is. We've got zoos and recreation centres there as well. So uh, we're on a journey and these are some of the things that we are, are working towards. Um, and just the final thing to say, um, that's what it's all about. It's about, we did have people on one side of the equation, we have, well, left the money bit out of it, people on one side of the equation, the earth on the other one, the number of people is going up dramatically, and that means that the, the challenge that we have is also going up, and how we have to manage things. I mean, the, basically, when it comes down to it on this planet, there are only three issues. There's how many, of the, how many of us there are, how many resources we use, and how cleverly we manage to allocate those resources, because otherwise we don't look after that planet terribly well. Thanks very much.